Hello everyone. How are you guys? Uh, volume 9. Volume 9. Wow. Every day for the last nine days. I love it. A uh, couple of changes we're making here at the old Carmine from New York tries to teach photography. A couple of changes. First, a subliminal message. Subliminal. I'm not holding this up. I'm not holding this up. You don't see this. This is a subliminal message to subscribe. Hit the hit the subscribe button if you want. No pressure. Also, another big change. Big, big change. I have been receiving a lot of emails. And I think it would be easier for me and faster for you guys to see your answers if I opened up the comments. Now, my first eight volumes, right? First eight episodes of Carmine from New York tries to teach photography. I made a firm rule. No comments. You want to ask me a question, you send me an email. That's still true. You can still send me an email. But I've opened up comments. All right? And uh, we'll see how that goes. And I think it'll be easier and faster for me to get the answers out. All right, if I open up the comments, this way I could just boom, bang them all out instead of sending an email. Okay, so that's a big change. We opened up uh, comments, all right? And don't forget the subliminal message. Whoa, that's subliminal, all right. Woo okay, let's carry on. We have been talking about medium format. Starting yesterday, in Volume 8. Um, in Volume 8, we went over where you should buy your film. Uh, the differences in the size between the 120 negative and the 35 millimeter negative, right? Uh, the 120 film, I, I was, uh, somebody brought it to my attention. I slipped and I said... I was on a roll. I said 35 millimeter compared to 120 millimeter. No, no, no. It's not 120 millimeter. This film, right, 120 film, I uh, checked it out. What does the 120 refer to? <laughs> and it's so simple. It's so simple. 120 was the next number, like um, version, number of film that Kodak made. They came up with this uh, size, dimension, um, and, and it was the 120th version of film. So that's why this is called 120 film. What was before it? Well, obviously 119, but I don't, I don't know if that exists. So I did a little more research, and a buddy of mine dropped off these two incredible boxes all right we'll start with this empty box first this box is from the dover film company in new york it says it says dover high speed panchromatic film right this is 116 size film but here's here's why my friend kept on kept this box. That's what it says right over here. I'm gonna read it to you. It says I have to get better lighting. It says War Supply Film. Developed this film before nineteen forty seven. This, even though this is an empty box, this film probably most likely, because it's stamped so, was produced for war photographers, whether they were for the Associated Press, whether they were for Navy photographers, Army photographers, etc., Marine photographers, Air Force photographers, right? This was surplus, and it was it's stamped so. And it says... Developed before October 1947, World War II. All right, that's just the box. 
Now we get to something cool. <laughs> this is the way one sixteen film came from this company, Super, as in S U P E R. This is Super. You are Super Film. <laughs> this also says developed before December nineteen forty nine. Now, this container it's very cool. It's a cardboard tube with a cardboard top. I don't know how it survived since the 40s. But anyway, let me show you what 116 film looks like. This is the gigantic 116 size film. Let's compare it to 120 size film. Okay, now let's see. I'll put it side by side. Oop, look at that. It is significantly shorter okay and look at the diameter difference right there okay look at that that is ridiculous this is the 120 right this is the 120 this is the 116 size now here's the beauty of 116 why it was so popular i'm going to put this show you how it fits in these containers by the way this film this 116 film is from kodak really cool this is when this is when spools were made out of metal now they're all plastic but anyway the cool thing about 116 which is no longer made right i don't think so right this is the 116 box from super this is the 116 film from dover so cool really appreciate my friend lending that to me for this uh, volume all right and this is an old this is an old probably one of the first rolls of film kodak produced in 120 very cool very cool nice metal metal spool with their name kodak on it very cool all right now here's what's cool about that 116 medium format size film and a lot of it is also true for 120. 116 film, why it was cool, why it was so popular for photojournalists, for photographers, for news people, people that had to get photos out for the newspaper. Remember, newspapers were the number one way people got their information. You might say it was radio, and. Eh, wrong a lot of places in the 40s didn't have access to radios okay so here's why medium format especially 116 was so perfect for the media for the newspapers after you take your picture after you develop the film you didn't need an enlarger that frame was so big you could just make a contact print, which means you take photographic paper, this photographic paper, you put the negative right on top of it. You take a piece of glass, clear glass, you put that on top of that to keep it nice and flat. You shine a light source onto the sandwich that you made. The light goes through the glass, through the negative, onto the paper, right? Let's say four seconds, right? I'm just throwing it out there. This was crude you know you're in the field you develop that piece of paper okay now you've got because the negative was so big you had the perfect size photograph to submit to the newspaper and they can print the photo which is a contact sheet and you didn't even need an enlarger that's the beauty of a big frame medium format picture back in the day where they just made a contact sheet develop that piece of paper right you put it in developer you put it in stop bath then you put it in fixer you rinse it you dry it you cut it you send it out to the newspapers boom that picture is all around the world and all the newspapers to show the action during world war ii wow what what great history Okay, that's what made out. That's what, if you go back in time, box brownie, everybody knows a box brownie camera. 
It looked like a box, a box, a square box with a lens, crude lens, a one element lens. And it just, you had one speed, click, click, done. Then you roll the film, click, click, done. You would, when the Kodak Brownie first came out, you bought the camera and it had a roll of film built into it. And what did you do? You sent back the whole camera with the exposed film because you, you, the consumer, couldn't take it out. You gave it back to the dealer. He would send the camera with the film in it and you would get back another camera with a fresh roll of film inside and your photographs. Why were photos back in the 30s and 40s this big, square, or rectangle? Because I'm going to show you using this Yashica D twin lens reflex 120 size medium format camera. I'm going to show you why pictures were that size. Because it's the size of the negative. You're, when you got your photos back, they were this big. In this case, right, six by six centimeters. And you got 12 pictures to the roll. And you get back in the little envelope from the drugstore, the Photoshop, 12 pictures this big. Why? Because you, they only had to take the negative, develop the negatives, and make contact prints. They would put your negatives on a sheet of paper, put glass, expose it. It wasn't fancy lighting. It was controlled lighting, but it wasn't fancy. Expose it, remove the glass, remove the negatives, develop the paper, cut them up, throw them in the envelope, and mail them to you. That's why photographs, all these, when you see your family pictures, you go, wow, these pictures are kind of small. Some of them are this big, square, some of them are rectangle. Why are some of them rectangle? Because that was a 6 by 9 It made a rectangle negative. That's the origin of medium format. It takes its roots. Now, 35 millimeter came first because it was the motion picture film. They weren't thinking about using it for still photography. 35 millimeter was film for the movie industry. Silent movie. The way that they would hand crank the camera. Then came 35 millimeter used in still pictures that we still use today. It wasn't until somebody, I don't know who invented 120. It could have been Kodak, could have been Agfa, could have been Ilford. I don't know. It was a wonderful idea because so many reasons. Your photos didn't have to be critically sharp because you're not, you don't have to blow it up to make a picture. It's the negative placed right onto the paper. Beautiful. So you could get away with a lot of problems like in a Kodak Brownie. That lens was one piece of glass or one piece of plastic later on that's it it was a simple simple lens so and it was good from six feet to infinity every picture so when you can take that negative and just put it on a piece of paper shine a light through it and develop the photographic paper and make a print out of it you get away with so many problems that we have today about sharp focus, right? Even, as we mentioned yesterday, the dust, little fibers on the negative, when you're just making a contact print, it mostly won't even show up. It's there, a little dust, a little bit of fibers. It's not even, it's there, but it won't even show because you didn't enlarge it. When you enlarge a picture, you're enlarging the dust too. Okay. Now, oh, subliminal message. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get into it. We've gone 15 minutes and I haven't even shown you guys really this beautiful camera. This is a camera made by Yashica. 
The style camera is a twin lens reflex, TLO. Why is it called that? It's got two lenses, a twin. This lens and this lens. Let me take this off. This is a lens hood. All right, now you see, watch how this comes off. It's called a bayonet. It goes in, half turn, locks in. It's not, it's not a screw mount like uh, most 35 millimeter lenses. Okay, uh, twin lens reflex. We'll start at the front. This is the lens that you take the picture with. Around the lens, just like I showed you before, it has the shutter and the aperture. It's adjusted with these wheels. Okay, now, Yashica, I don't know if they stole the idea from Roller Cord. I'm not going to get into it. I'm not a patent lawyer. But Rollerflex Roller also had this. Very cool. Because this camera, twin lens reflexes, are used as waist level cameras, okay? Meaning you hold it on your belly and you look straight down. That's the viewfinder. You look down here. There's ground glass that you focus on. And what you're looking at is this lens. Okay? And this is the lens that takes the picture. Okay? Um, it has little aids for focusing. This is a magnifier. So you can look closely at the ground glass. Make sure it's sharp. Right? Uh, getting back to if they stole an idea. Because you're looking straight down, right? Here's a bird's eye view. Here is the f-stop and the shutter speed. So you don't have to go like this, look this way, adjust your f-stop and shutter speed, then turn the camera this way to take the picture. All you have to do is continue to look down right on this opening, and it has your f-stop and shutter speed. That's a very cool thing. This side, right, you focus, right? Now as you focus, watch here. Watch here. As you focus the top lens, the taking lens also moves at the same time. So as one moves, the other one moves. Okay? Genius. These are wonderful cameras. Uh, these were made for a long time. These were so popular. All metal. Wonderful Japanese construction, right? Guess what? These were made from 58 to 74. Holy cow. From 1958 to 1974. Yeah, they were different models. Yashica, you know, A, B, C, D, E. They had a lot of different models. And basically what was the difference was the better quality of the lenses, right? <sighs> Vivian Mayer, Vivian Mayer, I talked about her in another volume. I'm not going to repeat it too much, but Google her, Vivian Mayer, street photographer, amateur street photographer who became a professional after she died because her photos were so good. She used almost exclusively a camera like this, twin lens reflex. Okay, the focusing is done with the knob here. You advance the film here. And what's on the other side? A cold shoe. Right here. That's where your flash would go. Okay? Most of the time, people don't use flash. All right? With 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 these kinds of cameras. These are mostly used outside in the daytime. This takes square 12 square photographs. Square format, to me, is a beautiful format square six by six six by seven six by nine is also cool but i love six by six a square format um it's neither portrait or landscape there's a third option right you talk to some photographers they'll say i hate when people take portrait pictures portrait you know which means you hold the photograph lengthwise i hate when they take landscape photos in portrait mode landscape photos are supposed to be taken in landscape mode meaning you hold the picture 
horizontally, not vertically. There's a third option. Square. Square format, like this camera takes, is neither landscape or portrait. It's square. So there's three options. Okay. This way you're smarter than the average bear. Um, one last cool thing about these cameras, right? Let's say you go to, I don't know, the Meadowlands. They have a nice little pony track over there. And you want to photograph the ponies as they come around the track. It's, they let you. They let you. They let you take pictures there. All right. You could pop up the magnifier, get it out of the way, and take your chubby finger and push this in till it clicks. And now you have this. You have another option for taking pictures. You put your eyeball in this hole and you look out this gigantic hole here and that's called a sports viewfinder. Now, very simple. You're at the pony track. Remember, we started this paragraph that you're at the track. So, your focus isn't going to change. It's on infinity. If a horse is 12 feet away from you and he's running, you got troubles. All right. So, you... Your focus is done, right? You took your Sekonic light meter. Boom. You got the right exposure. Your f-stop shutter speeds are set. Now the only thing you have to do is frame the picture right. Instead of looking down, right? Your camera's by your belly. Well, by your belly might be the railing, the fence, okay? Another person, right? You can hold the camera like this up to your eye. And with a sports finder, you just follow and then... Here's the shutter. The shutter button is over here. And click. You take the picture. Sports Finder. Here's a little trick only a photojournalist will tell you about. Cameras work upside down. And you could pop that back up. All right. Easier said than done. Okay. Flop down your magnifier. All right. Now, there's your focusing screen, and you could pre-focus, set your shutter speed and f-stop, get it all preset, and you can hold this camera above a crowd. As, so you just say you're know, six foot, and your arm's another two feet, three feet. All right, now you're nine feet above the crowd. You look up, bang, you got a shot, Okay. That's one more advantage of the beautiful twin lens reflex. Here's something wacky about these Yashica Ds, okay? And it says it very clearly in the instructions. Do not change the shutter speed once you have cocked the shutter. That's a problem back in the 50s and 60s and 70s with some fully manual, right? This camera's fully manual, fully mechanical. It's not battery operated. It's not automatic. The springs and the gears, once you set your, set your shutter speed, once you cock it, you can't change the speed. It has to do with the springs... The, the Ukrainian Kiev is like that too. You could actually break your camera changing the shutter speed after you've... Uh, let me think. I don't know. The Kiev, I have to look it up. It's either before or after you cock the shutter, you could destroy the camera. Not in, not in today's manual cameras, you know, modern film cameras. You can change it, change the shutter speed before you cock it, after you cock it. But with the Shika D... Shutter speed adjustment first, then cock the shutter. Okay. All right. Um, so to recap, we have a lot more to go over this for the rest of this uh, week, another couple of days. Um, we have more formats to show you as far as in the, in the medium format range. You know, we, this was square. Uh, maybe tomorrow we'll look at a rectangle, right? A six by nine. 
uh, opening, give you a nice big six by nine, I give, show the advantages of that. Remember, medium format cameras, right? This is only one type, twin lens reflex. Just like in 35 millimeter, there are single lens reflex medium format film cameras. Just like 35 millimeter film cameras, there are rangefinder medium format film cameras. Whatever you like the best, whatever feeling, if you like taking a picture like this, holding it up to your eye, focus through the lens, they got it. We'll go over all a couple of make and models tomorrow in our next volume. A um, couple of things to go over. Subscribe if you want to. Email me, black and white photo at AOL.com. Visit my free website with all my photographs, carmintaverna.com. Uh, I have opened up comments because I think it's going to be easier for me instead of answering a lot of emails individually. I figure I could just open up the comments, I'll answer them, and everybody can see it instead of me going over the emails individually. Okay, guys, uh, I think we touched on everything. This still gets me. This still kills me. Dover Film Company. And it says on the box, War Surplus. Wow, 1947. Different era, different time. This, this box could very, have, very well have been in a case case right a film hundred like a gross like 144 rolls been shipped over into the the war theater into the theater as they call it used to call it right in other words where the action was where the war was happening sent to a photographer a war photographer associated press photographer right a newspaper guy could have been over there could have been in Germany, it could have been in Italy, it could have been sent over to Japan, could have been sent over to Pearl Harbor. But at the end of the war, they had to gather everything back up and sell what they didn't use, as in surplus. And this is one of those rolls. Or it could have had this box, which did at one time contain film, could have spent its whole life in New York <laughs> and never left the factory. Who knows? All right, guys. Uh, we went a half hour. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Uh, comments are open. Subscribe if you want. Like it if you want. Uh, have a great day. And I mean it. Because you never know. You never know what life's going to bring you. So if somebody can tell you to have a nice day, have a nice day. That's an order. Have a great night.